I'm Yun Zhe Lin, uh, college analyst from Meta, and this is Steve Moore from Azuri. Uh, today we will talk about how to add open map data to rapid through Azuri. The, this talk including three parts. First, I will go through uh, how what's the open map data ingestion strategy at Meta, and then Steve will go through how to contribute data to OSM through Azuri. And last, we'll go for our future plans. As you may know that OSM is one of our major data source for MetaMapped, um, but we still see data gaps um, on OSM that we, we couldn't fulfill the uh, complete the user experience uh, on our side. So to, um, to fill this data gap, like starting from 2022, we started researching data sets on open map data portal from CTGIS department. Um, to find up to identify proper data set that can help us to fill this data gap. Um, so to ensure this non-OSM data set combined with OpenStreetMap data properly, we developed this open map data ingestion strategy at both license and data set levels. Um, the license level is uh, majorly involved the, the verifying the license type and compatibility. And on data set levels, there are two layers. The first layer is about data processing. Um, that includes uh, developing, designing the data triaging methods uh, and develop the conflation strategies and quality control plans. Uh, with this, it, we can have more insights about the data in terms of data specification and the, the data quality of data set itself. So we will understand how, how that this data set fit into the meta map schema. Uh, the second level of data set, uh, second layer of data set level is the is data curation, which is more quality controls on the com after the conflations on completed data sets to ensure that whatever we release um, to the products is ready. Um, after the once all the multi level uh, process is done, uh, we will output any contained uh, features to MetaMax which can help to fill the gaps. Speaking of completions, um, actually last year we have a presentation so talking about graph-based uh, footway completions, which can preserve connectivity better. If you, any of you are interested in that, um, interesting, this one of our many completion st strategies, uh, feel free to watch the video. The, the YouTube video is from last day of that is, is ready online. So with these two years of work, um, right now that we have a number of variety of uh, open data available on MetaMap uh, other than OSM. So that includes the footway, uh, which is the middle screenshot here, the footway center lines, um, and pavement markings, the dark mode down to the right there, and 3D meshes plus uh, building footprint with LiDAR height uh, on the top right corner um, and tree points here. Um, uh, this data is available in the US city listed here. So when we are putting this open data on MetaMaps, um, we never stop thinking about also contributing data back to OSM. So earlier this year, we started collaboration with Azuri um, to uh, using the connections between Rapid and Azure endpoints to publish the data and service data onto Rapid, which allows more community users contribute the data back to OSM. And Steve will go over the data preparation and publishing process uh, through Azure to Rapid. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Yunzi. So. So um, at Esri, as a lot of you probably know, we have a lot of um, you know city, county, national government agencies as customers. They have a lot of open data. And for a variety of different reasons, they want to see that open data in places like OpenStreetMap. So the problem is, you know, until now, well, they, they, they always are going to be creating that data for the most part in ArcGIS. They're hosting it there. They're managing it there, sharing it from there. And so they've never had until now a real good way of, of you know, pushing features like that into OpenStreetMap. Um, so when we had the opportunity to, to collaborate with Meta on this rapid integration, we, we definitely jumped at it because it's kind of a win-win. It, it gives our customers the ability to, you know, like I said, push push their data into OpenStreetMap. 
Uh, and then obviously OSM gets the benefit of having this additional incoming stream of, of high quality, I won't say authoritative data, so that the, I was at the keynote, um, but reliable data, we'll say, uh, that that you know can feed in from from our, our some of our customers. So I wanted to start kind of with just a, a little overview of what the OSM data pipeline looks like at Esri. So you know, in this case, like what I'm going to be talking about, rapid, we're we're getting that data from from our city, county, national government customers. We prepare that data for ingestion into OpenStreetMap, which I'll get into the details of in a bit. We publish those data sets as ArcGIS layers. Uh, from there, through the integration in, in Rapid, we can consume those layers directly in, in the editor. We actually have a, a very similar um, integration with Jossum. I'm not gonna really talk about that today, but that, that exists as well. Uh, obviously then those, those features make their way into OpenStreetMap and then kind of the downstream products from there. So we create actually live hosted feature layers from OpenStreetMap, the main OSM database. We also leverage daylight kind of downstream of OSM um, to create our vector tile base map and our 3D scene layers. So a bit more into the details of what we're actually doing. So Esri has for years had a, a program called Community Maps. And basically that lets our customers share their data with us so that we can include it in our proprietary Esri based maps. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, you know, you've probably seen like topographic and streets and kind of all those commonly you know, used ones. Uh, so that's been around for a long time, but three years ago at our user conference, we added this new data sharing option. So if you see the white screenshot there, that little checkbox that says share my data with uh, other map providers, that gives us permission to reshare their data with OpenStreetMap. So that was introduced, like I said, three years ago, almost exactly three years ago. And since then, we've had over 300 of our customers uh, opt into that sharing, and they've shared over 100 million features with us. So that data now is, is actively being used through this integration in Rapid to, to improve OpenStreetMap. Um, I don't think I have time for a, a live demo. If we have some time at the end, I can try to show it real quick. But um, the screenshot you know, gives you a bit of an idea. Well, actually, you guys probably, if you're still here from Ben and Brian's talk, you, you saw, I think, some of it. Um, but basically, you know, we have a separate kind of interface where it's reading all these layers out of ArcGIS Online. Uh, you can just add them to the editing environment and rapid and start pulling features across into OSM. So for now, it's mostly building footprints and address points. Um, we we want to expand that into some new data types. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll mention that a little bit at the end. I also want to mention we push a lot of this data into uh, OSM Daylight as well through the Microsoft building sidecar file. So if you're not familiar with Daylight, um, it's it's sort of got a, a main planet PBF of you know the core data, and then it has these auxiliary sidecar files that can be sort of appended and you know packaged with it. So one of them is Microsoft ML buildings. We actually push a lot of these community maps buildings into that sidecar file as well. So as you might uh, suspect, we have a fairly defined onboarding process for for these data sets. Um, you know, first we need to identify good data sets. So. Primarily, one of the first things we look at is compatibility with ODBL, obviously, that's that's super important. Um, we've had a handful, we never really had a problem in this regard, but we've had to, you know, kind of work, not work around really, but we've had to make some accommodations in a couple of cases, but for the most part, it's, it's, it's pretty seamless there. Um, we also definitely want to make sure that it's good quality data, that it's accurate. We've only had a couple that I can think of that we just had to sort of outright say no, because the, the quality wasn't there. Um, and then we want to make sure that it adds value to OSM. So there's there's also cases where we we get a suggestion for a layer. We go look at OpenStreetMap, and 98% of it is already done. So in those cases, we we just kind of don't pursue it. The prepare step is really about transforming the schema into OSM tags and values. So if the data comes through our community maps program, that's a defined schema. We have a schema for that. We know what it is. We can pretty easily interchange between um, between those, but we get a lot of OSM mappers that, that, you know, maybe they live in Richmond. They say the city of Richmond's got open building footprints. You guys should include them. We go and grab that, which is great, but it's in a completely different schema. And so it's, you know, it's not just about changing field names either. It's about like, you know, every, every city, every county, they, they store address information differently. They have different values for building types, things like that. So it's kind of like, you know, mapping those, those, that's really the sort of the hard part. Uh, the review section, um, we we definitely you know try to have a, a good open community review period. We have a wiki page uh, on the OpenStreetMap wiki that just lists all the data sets. 
Uh, and then we also, like I said, we, we publish ArcGIS feature layers from every one of these data sets and ArcGIS online. So they all have an item there and there's a mechanism for discussion. You know, if anybody has any questions um, or any issues with the data, then we've had, we've had some feedback that, through that, um, that process, which is helpful. So from there, we pretty much release the data. We make it publicly view, uh, you know, viewable, accessible, editable in, in rapid, and people can start uh, pulling features, pushing features into OSM. So I had a similar slide last year at State of the Map US. Uh, I just updated these numbers and I was actually really surprised how much they've gone mm -hmm. up. So last year, you know, to date, we've, we've uh, added almost 3 million buildings from our feature layers into OpenStreetMap. Last year, I think it was like 1.2, 1.1, something like that. So a huge, a huge increase. A lot of buildings in the Microsoft building sidecar, like I mentioned, you know, over 140 footprint layers, over 30 address point layers. Um, and I think it's kind of cool just to see the top 10 contributors. And this is in terms of the number of features that have actually somebody has added from the feature layer into OSM. So Linz in New Zealand, that's the national mapping agency there. Um, kind of was actually spearheaded by the local mapping community, local OSM community uh, in New Zealand. And they suggested this data set. They really collaborated with us a lot. And then once we published it, they they went crazy with it. And they've added, you know, over 700,000 buildings on their own. So, so what's next? Uh, yeah, we, we want to see some new varieties of data. Like I said, it's mostly building footprints and address points for now. Um, the screenshot there shows a couple of footways layers that actually Yunzi recently worked with us to get to get published in there. So I think we'd like to see more, you know, more line features, probably roads, things like that. Um, Yunzi is also working on a blog post with a colleague of mine at Esri, and it's going to really kind of try to outline the details of the data preparation and publishing steps. So right now it kind of bottlenecks to more or less me and one other person at Esri. Um, and so it's it's difficult for, you know, both you know, us and for our customers, it's just sort of a, a bottleneck. So we want to make those details more, we want to publish them and then make it more of a, a self-service kind of thing so that people can, you know, if they have the the time and the, and the skills and they have the data, then they can, they can do this themselves. Um, and yeah, you know, kind of just make it easier. Uh, and then if you have any any data sets you want to suggest that we include in, in, uh, in Rapid, definitely email. It's easy to remember, osm at meta.com and osm at esri.com. You'll reach me or Yunzi or one of our colleagues that can help. Um, thank you. <laughs>